If you think the digital revolution has made the world small, then you're in for a rude awakening. Everything, and I mean everything, is just a click away. New media, online applications, social networking, all changing the face of how businesses connect with their customers. They're not just buzzwords in this day and age. They're revolutionizing the way we look into business. I mean, who would have thought humans would have come so far thanks to Alan Turing, who invented the first modern computer back in 1936. But this isn't just a series that recounts the history of this digital hype. We will traverse the inside world of this new media, dissect it, and understand how it works. As an actor, I'm constantly on the search for new challenges to overcome. And this may be one of my greatest challenges yet, to find out what it takes to succeed in the new digital age of the business world. In this episode, we delve into the world of video content and management from some of the media giants in the industry. His vision really was that at one point in the future, video would become as ubiquitous as text is on the internet. We found that um, it's the equivalent of, of flipping channels right. on TV. Uh, where you're, you're changing between entertainment bucket to a lifestyle one, to sports, to news, and your attention span is, is a little bit shorter. We'll show you how you can connect your business to the online video world. There are literally hundreds of online video sites available on the internet today. Each one of them has its own style and form of content, and they cater to certain demographics as well. If you wanted to connect your product or business to the online video world, which one would you choose? Or do you come up with your very own online video site? This is a story of a collaboration between two powerhouses, a content provider and a technological giant. In 2010, ZinMSN was born, a portal that bridges the different media channels in Singapore together. Now it is one of the leading lifestyle, entertainment and news portals on the internet. Moses, hey. nice to see you. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to know about how ZinMSN actually um, came about. Um, it was about a year and a half ago. <laughs> when we were looking for a partner to play with. Two companies came together, Microsoft and MediaCorp. Microsoft is such a huge giant when it comes to technology, uh, but they had very little competence in content right. generation and creation and, and playouts. Mm. But MediaCorp, that's all we do. I mean, no, that's not what all we do, but, you know, but MediaCorp is a real big giant in the area of content generation, creation and advertising. It was a natural fit when we came together. Right. We had been looking to go alone to create a, a mega portal, an entertainment and lifestyle portal right. for some time. The several different channels in Singapore had their own web pages, promotions and online videos. This collaboration allowed all the channels to have a cohesive voice, attractive viewers and advertisers alike. What were some of the challenges before Sin MSN came on board? Before Sin MSN, MediaCorp had more than 20 entertainment and lifestyle uh, online sites. What it meant was it was a real challenge for users to find what they want. As a company, all we could do was use these sites as marketing tools, as an extension of our traditional media, our TV sites uh, and our, our radio stations. We really couldn't do very much in terms of advertising. Mm -hmm. We couldn't offer the advertisers a one-stop shop. When we were doing it with 20 of our sites, the sum total of all the sites gave us something to the tune of 10 million page views a month. Right. And we had a collection of two or 300,000 uh, unique visitors a month. This new format allowed viewers the opportunity to go to one portal and watch videos in a more organized manner. But it didn't just help the community, it gave the company a boost in revenue. 
Now, uh, it means that uh, for the advertiser, you have one place where all the eyeballs are gathered mm -hmm. and you can offer a complete advertising solution uh, that's of value to these people. So how many users now do you have on CineMSN? We have 1.9 million users a month on CineMSN. Right, that's a lot. Yeah, it took us uh, in a short space of seven months. Uh, we became the top online portal in Singapore. Audiences have always been used to watching hours of episodes on traditional television. The change to online viewing did not only differ in terms of content, Zin MSN found that the online demographic started to change as well. We at MediaCorp, we recognize that uh, there's a different group of audience that, that we capture that's online right now, and they're the younger set of audience. Um, so we're finding that, uh, that uh, our group of our viewers are between 15 to 34. About 50% of our viewers, our, our unique visitors, are young and, and, and happening crowd. So what do we do? We ride on this. We are developing content that will air first online. For Zin MSN, it isn't just about rehashing traditional TV programs and putting them online anymore. Unlike television shows, they have also found something uniquely different about the online audiences. We found that um, it's the equivalent of, of flipping channels right. on TV, uh, where you're, you're changing between entertainment bucket to a lifestyle one, to sports, to news, and your attention span is a little bit shorter. On TV, you could watch a 30-minute show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, online, you would likely catch it in snippets of three minutes. Zinemasen has somewhat revolutionized the concept of traditional TV viewing here in Singapore. This portal also allowed companies or businesses to tap onto that huge network of audiences and resources. Next up, we'll see how another video management powerhouse does their online branding and how you can do the same for your organization. Let's say you have a good product or business and want to expand your business online. Instead of just putting it up for show and tell on a traditional internet web page, you want something else to engage your audiences, perhaps online video content. How do you go about doing it? One company may have the right solution for you. Hi, Dennis, how are you? Nice Hi, to meet you. Yeah, Such a pleasure, I finally get to see this. Started by Jeremy Allaire in late 2004, Brightcove has now developed into a powerhouse in the online video market. They shape and brand online streaming video content for companies who are looking to immerse viewers with a totally new experience. This isn't just about putting up your videos in a regular YouTube channel. So what is the difference between um, Vimeo, YouTube and, say, Brightcove? YouTube is really, the goal there is for awareness. It's really meant to cause people to take action on something. In the case of uh, brand control, there's not a lot of brand control in a YouTube or a Hulu type of experience because your video could be up there, for example, uh, with your competitor's video. What we do is we enable the technology behind it. The new era in online marketing, brand control. It's not just about controlling the content that viewers see, it's about channeling the product or business into something new. Here's one of our clients' uh, websites, Aussie Bum. Aussie Bum is a leading uh, retailer of swimwear and sportswear based in Australia, but all of their business comes over the web. They're, they're only an e-commerce uh, vendor. They have used video as a tool to really um, reach out and engage with uh, their target market demographics, uh, young men uh, in teens to early 30s, that it's, it's really all about lifestyle. It's about a lifestyle on the beach uh, as well as off the beach where um, people are active or they're really, uh, um, they've got a uh, aggressive lifestyle where they, they're risk takers, uh, they try sports, and um, the reflection of what they wear is really what it's all about. 
Well, from a, from a brand marketing perspective, one really good example is a company that we work with in Korea, the Latte Group, a large conglomerate. But one of their divisions has a broad variety of beverages that they bring to market. And what they've done is to really take an innovative approach to communicating to a customer base that, that really had, had begun to disappear. They revived one of their brands through innovative use of video. What they do is this. They put a little tag, a QR code that's actually printed on the packaging of the bottle. And, and consumers in the market can take their smartphones and snap a picture of this code and it automatically generates a link to a, a web location that uh, immediately brings a video to their phone. And it, ta it takes a, a story of a young couple, um, a very analogous to what we see on Korean telenovelas or, or soap operas oh, on Korean, TV. Yeah, okay, Korean drama. A Korean drama. <laughs> and so they've built a story around this brand that uh, people want to keep watching. And so what it does is this, number one, it's entertaining and engaging for, for the consumer. Uh, secondly, uh, they're certainly buying more um, of the product, right. exactly, because because each each bottle has a different code, and they can watch a variety of videos, and the the whole premise is that they're piecing the story together. So this is a way that Latte Group, which has been around for for years, a very established company, is is really reaching a younger um, uh, segment of the consumer market for um, a brand of uh, beverage that's been around for years, had seen declining sales, and since they've been doing this, uh, have really revived the brand, and sales are up. As with any other form of web tools, there are always drawbacks. As we have seen through Zen MSN, the issue lies in the short attention span of the online audience, giving new meaning to the term channel surfing. What are actually some of the challenges that you face with this uh, new technology and online content? There's a lot of challenges in, in the past that were all built really around infrastructure. When uh, publishers of uh, different video content first brought video to the web, you know, it was all about, uh, is there enough bandwidth and is, is there enough speed? On a global basis, infrastructure has improved dramatically. Part of the force behind that is uh, large companies such as Akamai, uh, the world's largest content delivery network. Uh, Akamai and Limelight and uh, JStream in Japan, these types of companies are basically uh, internets within the internet. And, and, and they, they provide guaranteed bandwidth for uh, users. Now, remember that 51% of all internet traffic uh, this past quarter on a global basis was uh, driven by video. And here in Asia Pacific, it's 40, uh, slightly above 40%. So you have to have the infrastructure in place so viewers have a great viewing experience. Because if you don't, they're gonna turn it off. And the people at Brightcove have come up with another solution for this issue. It's something called hotspotting. It's about keeping their attention span and also driving engagement because the longer they're watching the video and then if you build advertising around it, it creates a monetization or an opportunity to make money off the video that you're showing. Or uh, let me give you an example of a, um, a large global uh, retailer, Marks & Spencer. Marks & Spencer uh, actually sells quite a bit of uh, products online, MarksAndSpencer.com. When they started, it was just static uh, displays of uh, jewelry, clothing, shoes, and other types just of like things. Just like any other, just like any other sort of store department online. Yes, yeah. in fact, you know, I, I'm, you know, still these days in, in, in some markets, you you see these old-fashioned websites, and and they're not doing very well. Right. Marks and Spencer is really, you know, a retailing you know, brand leader, and 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 their uh, digital media group has a, a tremendous amount of vision. What they did, uh, they integrated a number of tools uh, into their website to um, present a, um, um, a higher level viewing experience. For example, some of their clothing lines, they, they wrap not just pictures, but videos around it with models from fashion shows showing the item. Now within that, they've also integrated the, uh, little hotspots. Hotspots are little uh, parts of the video where they'll draw in the, um, the viewer for more engagement. And uh, it would, for example, suggest, if you like this dress, we have it available in six colors. Click here if you'd like to see them. So the user can click. And with that- And it will with, show the whole range. It will show the whole range. And they can even, uh, in, in some cases, click on colors of, um, of the garment and see it change on a still. So they get a real um, total vision and impression of what it would look like. 
People want choices. They take this step further and then they hotspot it again. If somebody clicks on a color, it means that they're engaged. So then they'll offer a, another choice and that is, if you want to see what sizes are in stock, click here. Right. And what's happening on Marks and Spencer is when and people are watching the video of something that they, they like on the web page and they see the colors that are available and then they click on their size and they see it's in stock, um, Marks and Spencer will then um, uh, give them an option to go into the shopping cart and say, if you like this, you can click here and we'll put it in your shopping cart. And by the way, if you order now, uh, shipping is free, as an example, for, for an incentive. And what they're finding is that this conversion rate on items that have video wrapped around them is much higher than on uh, items that simply have a picture or a text description. So uh, they've seen dramatic increase in sales after they started using video on their website. It may seem daunting for a company to get online with video content for the first time, with all the platforms available. Do you need hotspotting? Do you need shorter videos? Or would you even need it in the first place? After the break, we'll show you a few ways to make sure you do the right thing. It's not just about traditional websites anymore. Online video is now part and parcel of any web content. Whether you're a new startup or an established business, video should be part of your web strategy. But it isn't just about slapping new clips on your page. The content has to be controlled and branded right. And for Zin MSN, being online first can help in attracting more viewers to their more traditional forms of media. You were talking about a Korean drama that you had um, online first. Yeah. Was the reason for having it online um, a gauge to see whether or not the popularity would be more powerful on online before going on to mainstream TV? Not at this stage. When we acquired the program, uh, we acquired the rights to do it online and, and on air. And so it was a um, calculated move, rather, uh, where we were experimenting. And, uh, and, it, and it paid off because um, what we found that was that the interest levels that were generated online helped the ratings of the on-air on show as well. So it was complimentary. Right. And as the TV trailers were running for, for the program, it drove traffic back to the online space. So it was, it was a hand-in-hand -hand, um, relationship. Gone are the days when we think online media is just for the young and hip. This core demographic is changing rapidly. A lot of times people think, oh, people on the web are, it's always, you know, young, uh, you know, tweens and millennials and, and Generation Y, and, but it's not. Uh, even organizations such as uh, uh, AARP, the Association uh, for Retired People, uh, which is mostly based out of the U.S., but they actually do cover multiple countries, um, they have on their website a whole health section, and they use video as a, a way of raising awareness about uh, osteoporosis, about diabetes, about other health issues that seniors should be aware of. And we're seeing this, and advertisers are also seeing that an uh, increasing trend of older people watching video on the web. In addition to monetizing video or, or sharing information, uh, we see a lot of organizations using video simply as a way of conveying a message. We even have an internet church uh, that we, wow. we work with. Uh, Both powers, politics and religion. <laughs> exactly, yeah. we, we cover the gamut. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I never even knew there was an inter, you know, such a concept of internet churches, but this is a, it's a virtual church. It's on the internet. Uh, they have a, a small church with a studio, but they're um, they're based out of the Philippines, mm -hmm. and and they have forty thousand members. That that's ev huge. I, exactly, it, but it's uh, it's uh, offshore workers and contract workers in oil fields and nurses overseas and domestic helpers and 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 um, and Philippine diaspora, you know, running businesses overseas, and these people uh, these people are logging on every weekend and watching church services over the web, and they do it in different dialects, Tagalog, Ilongo, and, and so it's, it's a very creative way of, of reaching people who are you know, located uh, remotely, but all have a common interest. Web video content has come a long way since the birth of YouTube in February 2005. The marketing possibilities are now endless, 
hundreds of online video portals generating thousands of new videos every single day. As the rate of the uploads increase, so does the expectation of the online viewer. Another area where this is going to bring us is basically rising expectations of viewers. They are going to be um, wanting more empowerment and more control over their engagement with content, including video content on the web. And this is going to be a challenge and put pressure on publishers to be innovative and to be creative in ways that um, uh, not only attracts an audience, but retains an audience. So what advice would you give to businesses who haven't um, yet got online content or would like to go on online content? Well, the best advice you know that, that I could offer, and I think a lot of uh, great advertising and web agencies that help businesses bring their content uh, to the web um, guide them this way. Mm -hmm. and, and it ties back to you've got to have a strategy for why are you doing this? Um, because to put video up on uh, use it as a tool for your your presence on the web, uh, again, it's usually about making money from the video asset, it's about sharing information, or it's about conveying a message. And I think sometimes uh, companies might get into trouble if they mix those three unnecessarily. And if, you, and if instead um, they determine what their business goals are and, and marry the web strategy to support those business goals, they'll have a more coherent strategy and they'll have a, an ability to measure you know, like our investment. Um, you know, to, to put video on the web, it is an investment, but it's an investment that you can get a great return on. But really, you're only going to get a return if you have a coherent strategy for who you're trying to reach and what are you trying to accomplish. And if you can measure that and make money or build your brand or convey your message, uh, that's what the success will be. Fantastic. Interactive video content, unique QR codes, and the promise of augmented reality. It's a dynamic and constantly changing environment. Just think about it, perhaps 50 years down the road from now, who knows what online video content will become.